We are the first fire department in the entire country that has a mobile ECMO program, which we'll explain to you just in a little bit. Um, and I think that's important for this community to understand because we got a lot of challenges. Here in New Mexico, in the city of Albuquerque, unfortunately there's a lot of times that we're not number one. Um, that we just, we fail in, in other areas, but it's important to celebrate our achievements. And this is a huge achievement for this community. It couldn't happen somewhere else. There's other communities, they have millions of dollars dedicated to a program like this, and they didn't pull it off. And we pulled it off. I wanted to share that I had the chance to accidentally watch this happen. Um, and these, including our paramedic supervisor and our EMS physician, um, when we were doing uh, lunches, Thanksgiving lunches in the International District at a location, and a gentleman felt ill, um, they took him outside to get some fresh air, and he collapsed. And 911 call, four or five minutes later, rescue five, and a whole bunch of folks showed up. Um, and standing with his family, who was uh, none too pleased to see what was going on, just the calmness of the way our, our firefighters and paramedics and team worked. And when they brought the Lucas device out, um, and to see that work, and we watched for about 15 minutes, and I'll be damned if it didn't work. Um, he had been down and out and non-responsive for I don't know how long. Um, it brought him back, and it worked, and it got him stable enough that they were able to transport. And I don't know what happened after that, but I know that he showed up at the hospital um, with a pulse and a new chance that he didn't have when we started. In 2018, Albuquerque Fire Rescue responded to over 1,300 out-of-hospital cardiac arrest events. That's more than 110 per month. In order to achieve success and to save lives, our timing must be exact and our training automatic. Beginning from dispatch, our crews are toned out. At the station, we would hear a nine echo, which is a uh, cardiac arrest. Our response times are gonna be anywhere from four to six minutes. After we've arrived on scene, we make uh, patient contact, and the first order of business is to confirm that we do have a working code. We would check pulses, and if the patient is deemed to be pulseless and apneic, meaning no pulse and no breathing, then we would expose the chest and immediately begin uh, manual compressions. While this is going on, several things are happening simultaneously. IVs are being set up, bags are being spiked, the airway is being prepped. While this is happening, someone is prepping the Lucas device. We want to get that Lucas device on the patient as soon as possible. And it's important to note, without the Lucas device, ECMO would not be possible. If we are successful and we do have a return of spontaneous circulation, we will go through the ECMO inclusion criteria. We will alert the hospital that we do have an ECMO candidate, and they will either deploy the mobile ECMO team to the site, or we will transport all the way to the hospital for cannulation. Without this piece of equipment, we, have, we would have never become the first agency in North America to be able to provide pre-hospital ECMO. Essentially, pre-hospital ECMO is a heart-lung bypass. This has been a collaboration with some of the uh, intensivists from the University of New Mexico Hospital who have collaborated with us, uh, helped us along with uh, the city administration, fire administration, and your support to retrofit one of our ambulances or rescues uh, to essentially be a surgical suite that we're able to perform these procedures at the scene of the cardiac arrest for nobody, like I said, is doing this in North America. We're the first agency um, outside of Paris that's doing this pre-hospital. Thank you for watching. We would like to say thank you to all nine city councilors uh, for your assistance and your dedication, uh, not only to AFR, but to the citizens of Albuquerque. And also uh, an additional and special thank you to Councilor Sanchez, Pena, Winter, Davis, Gibson, and Jones for your assistance with the uh, high fidelity mannequin. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you once again for your service and for helping us improve ours.